This is Megapine. Megapine. M I P. With Masamela Matsumo. Mark Thompson. Megapine. Get woke. Once again, happy 2023, everyone, as we reconvene in this year. In fact, during this Martin Luther King Jr. week, we're happy to have back with us the founder of the largest online progressive community and Civics with a Q and the host of the Brief podcast. That doesn't sound right. The podcast, the Brief, because it's not a brief. Well, it is a brief podcast. Oh. Not, <laughs> yeah. No. Not, not that brief. Not that brief. <laughs> we, we, we don't do brevity. That's, that's something that we <laughs> maybe need to work on some more. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, no, it's all good. Marcos is here. Hey, man, how are you? Happy New Year. Welcome back. Hope Santa Claus was good to you. Happy New Year to you, Mark, and all your listeners. It's good to be back. And uh, politically, it's going to be an interesting year. So it is. I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad we're not looking at an apocalypse in Congress. We're just looking at Republican dysfunction and, uh, and uh, circular firing squad. So it's a much better year than that. Than, and it's a great year because we all turned out and worked our asses off right. and right. pretty much won last year's election. Yeah, McCarthy got the House barely. This may actually be worse for them than had they kept, had they lost, had they not gotten control of the House. I think this for the Republican Party is a worst case scenario. Look, if this, if what he has is definition of winning Marcos, I wouldn't want that. <laughs> that's the, you know, that's like the old song. If, if, uh, if loving you is wrong, I don't want to be right. I mean, I don't. Yeah, this is the, the I, don't, I don't know about this being winning. It uh-huh. took, it took, yeah, it took 15 rounds for him to get elected. He had the same majority that Nancy Pelosi did. And Nancy Pelosi breezed in. There was no drama. All the legislation passed. Everybody was happy. I mean, it was for, for everybody talking about Democrats in disarray, like Pelosi ran a tight ship and somehow managed to placate all the wings of the party. You have McCarthy who, who um, basically gave away, who knows what, we don't even know what he gave up to the the crazy caucus they the so-called moderates are all angry and pissed off and making noise god for you know i don't see them passing any kind of legislation and if they do it may have to be with democratic support things like passing a debt limit increase they ran on what inflation higher gas prices and crime and the first two pieces of legislation were anti-abortion which literally is one of the reasons they lost last year and then they, uh, um, what was the, uh, I can't even remember what the other one, completely, completely unrelated. Oh, Hunter Biden uh, investigation committee vote. So, so they, they want to look at more Hunter Biden dick pictures, apparently. I mean, they, they seem obsessed with that. So it's, it's kind of, <laughs> had Democrats retain control of the House, what would have happened is that pretty much nothing would have happened because we still wouldn't have a filibuster-proof majority in the Senate and anything that the House passed would have been vetoed, uh, would have been stopped by the filibuster in the Senate, right? So basically, what would have happened is, is you'd have the Senate um, confirming judges. That's, that's it. What we have now is pretty much the same thing. The Senate's going to still be confirming judges because the Democrats maintain control. And the House, but what's going to happen is that had the Democrats control the Senate, the House, in 2024, Democrats could have blamed everything on, sorry, sorry, Republicans could have blamed everything on the Democratic price stock though. They could have said, ah, oh, they got control, it's inflation, the economy, whatever, right? Everything would have been the Democrats' fault. As is right now, they can no longer do that. And what it does is it gives Democrats a chance to run against the Republican House. Because they are they, abortion, uh, Hunter Biden dick pictures. Uh, they're gonna, you know, they're gonna, they're gonna hate on on trans people. They're gonna hate on gay people. They're gonna hate on. They're gonna do all the. Um, they they're gonna they're gonna what do you call it? Um, they're gonna do everything that they did that lost them the last election. That's what they're gonna do. And I, I almost put it this way, like, think about what we ran on. We ran on the uh, Donald Trump democracy, threat to democracy. That was one of our one of our um, lines. And the other one was abortion, that Republicans are coming for your rights. 
those are the things that they're doing, right? First thing that McCarthy did was thank Donald Trump for becoming Speaker of the House. They're still wrapped around Donald Trump. They're still wrapped around that crazy agenda. And so they're validating our campaign. So we can run the exact same campaign, but with presidential year turnout, which is going to actually be a net positive for Democrats. Now, what did Republicans run on? Crime, which was a made up. I mean, crime's, a, crime's, crime's an issue, of course, but there's nothing special about last year. Crime is not up in any meaningful way. They ran on, uh, on um, inflation. Inflation's down. They ran on gas prices. Gas prices are down. And not to mention, neither of those had anything to do with, <laughs> with Joe Biden, right? It was corporate greed. It was the global economy emerging from a two-year shutdown because of COVID. There's a lot of factors that were in place. So their campaign was a campaign based on made-up issues. And so what are they doing now? They're, they're crying about gas stoves. They're crying about, you know, critical race theory. It's still made-up issues. These have no salience with voters. They lost last election because they can't talk about the issues that voters want to talk about. And they just literally, McCarthy gave the House to the exact people that cost him the election last year. It literally is, it may be a best case scenario for, for the Democrats. And I actually said this before the election. I said, you know, it wouldn't be the worst if McCarthy had a narrow majority because then Joe Biden will have something to run against in 2024. And I think that's what's happening. No, you're right. It, it, again, if this is winning, I don't know what winning is. It, there's a saying, an old saying, I can't think of it now, how, it, how it, to, to your point, it, it would have been easier to stay on the outside throwing stones. I forget what that yeah. the knows, let me know, but there's a saying, uh, I can't think of it now. But, um, but yeah, because the spotlight's on them. First and foremost, he's not even a real speaker because one of the things he agreed to that he compromised on um, was just as a, a one person can make a simple motion to remove the chair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and we know they're going to do that. Every vote. Yeah. I don't know what, what's on your schedule for this time tomorrow. What are we going to be doing it? I don't year? know. Democrats should be calling in every day. Why not? Yeah, right. I mean, they can do it. They can do it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know what, what we're going to be doing tomorrow, what some of you listening are going to be doing this time tomorrow, but I know for certain they're going to call for a vote of no confidence in the chair. We know that. That's without a doubt. This time next week, who knows what'll be going on? But we know they're going to do that eventually, um, and and that's going to be um, a big problem. So I, I I think you're right. And then they, like you said, I know I've asked you this question before, and I don't think you've been able to answer it. I can't. Maybe some happening New Year, you'll be able to answer this question. Do they not understand math? You're right. These issues they lost. So to win election. Elections, you need to do addition and not subtraction. What is it? What, what is it that they don't get about that, Marcos, that, that this numerically is not working? And each time it comes around, the numbers get smaller and smaller and smaller. What, what is that? It just, is that just simply, do, I mean, are they, do they want, I guess, do they not want electoral numbers and they more so want numbers for Fox News? I mean, that is, Mark, we've been asking this question for yeah. over a decade. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Over a decade. But it, 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 the math gets worse and worse for them. I mean, here's a, here's a fun number because we're going to be using this number. You're going to be hearing this number for the next year and a half. Um, Republicans hold 18 seats in the House that Joe Biden won. Democrats, I think, had two seats that Trump won. I'd have to look that up, but it's two or three, right? This House is, this House majority is on a very precarious ledge. And it is dependent not on Marjorie Taylor Greene and Lauren Boebert and, uh, and Matt Gates. It's dependent on a bunch of Republicans in Long Island, in Orange County, California. These are moderate, uh, socially liberal-ish districts. And they are being pushed to these vast extremes and these Republicans are already just by default are endangered. And the House isn't thinking, all right, we need to hold this majority. So we got to hold these, these precarious positions. They surrendered. McCarthy surrendered to the safest, most, most crazy, most volatile members of that caucus. So uh, I would say, I mean, right now that Democrats are going to take back the House in, in 
2024, the big questions are the White House and the Senate um, for different reasons. But the, the map is not generous for the Republicans. And McCarthy is doing nothing because, like you say, Carly is no... he. I'm, I'm sure McCarthy knows. McCarthy knows 18 of his caucus members are in in Democratic seat and only are under Democratic uh, holds because of mid-year drop-off in turnout in California, in New York. So he knows this. He's not that dumb. He don't care. What was more important for him was to be speaker than it was to actually build a durable, lasting, effective Republican majority that can actually accomplish things. So he, he surrendered to the nihilist Republican caucus, the ones who want to burn the system down, who don't have no interest in governing, have no interest in delivering for their constituents. And, and uh, has basically handed over the gavel, gavel to, to those guys. Meanwhile, the Democrats are delivering, the inflation's lowering, gas prices are lowering. Uh, we still have a 50-year unemployment, you know, unemployment record there is uh, increasing signs for the first time I'm noticing that economists are, are increasingly optimistic that we'll get the, the soft landing, which means that you know, as, as the Fed raises their interest rates to tampen down inflation, conventional wisdom says that that will eventually tip into a recession. There's very positive signs right now. It's still early, but there are positive signs that we may be able to avoid the recession. I will be able to cool down inflation to a level and still maintain high employment levels. So that looks like that, that it may happen. And, and uh, the war in Ukraine is going well. Like there, there, there's, there's a lot of positives in, in how demo, what democratic governance looks like. And so if you're a Republican, the issues that you're going to run against, you know, there's not a lot of substantive issues. I guess maybe you lean on gas stoves. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to vote on gas stoves. And in fact, gas stoves are a blue city thing, not a rural red state, you know, America thing. They're all on electric. I mean, this is, you know, just statistically. So they invent these issues that mean nothing. And I guess it they, they riles them up and it gets them motivated and excited, but it does nothing to build a, a durable, lasting electoral majority. And they've given up on that. I mean, they just simply had given up on that. So it's, um, it's a gift to to the Democrats. Would have been better had the Democrats held the House and gotten an extra seat in the Senate. Then we would talk about getting rid of the filibuster. A lot of great things would, would be would be happening. Um, unfortunately, that's that's uh, <laughs> fortunately that didn't happen. So second best case scenario is that Republicans have that tiny tiny House majority, so they're eating each other up. I mean, they're all fighting each other. It's, it's, it's been great. And nothing's going to stop. And in fact, with the Republican presidential primary getting underway, those people will be egging on the worst impulses of the Republican House. The stop trying to obsessively vilify Energy Act or the Stove Act. <laughs> so that, that's, that's some people who are bored. We don't you have know, originality, like, nothing. That's that's just straight. You got time to come up with that. Yeah, you, you're not. Something's wrong. And you know what the basis of that is? Is the government report that said that families, kids in households with gas stoves are more likely to have asthma. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's all like we want life. They, they don't care about life. They care about control, you know, women control, and they care about it, uh, extraction industry profits. Because the Republican Party is funded by big oil, big gas. And, and that's, that's what matters. I mean, you think, okay, these things cause asthma on kids. Maybe we'll do something about that. Maybe, maybe we'll, we'll encourage people to, to use alternate means of, of cooking. But they're, they're, it's just weird. They don't care about kids. Yeah, yeah. Um... You, you you know, you mentioned the Dems in disarray and, you know, I thought about you over the holidays because that's always been the narrative with the New York Times and other publications. Times like this, I really miss our friend Eric Bollard because uh, mm -hmm. he, he, he really fought against that. Dems yeah. in disarray, Dems in disarray, Dems in disarray. Have you seen a headline that even suggested Republicans are in disarray? I mean, it's such a matter of fact, but you don't see it 
played up the way it was for Democrats. It was just like, you know, this is just part of the process. How many ballots were there? I don't, I lost count of the number. 15, 15. 15 ballots. On 15 ballots, so 15 ballots. Uh, and, and again, what he had to uh, give up. Uh, it, uh, you mentioned Hunter Biden. So I think you posted even on Twitter a reaction. Only 14% of Americans, Americans now, not just with Democrats, say the House Republicans uh, should make Hunter Biden a priority. Have you, uh, by the way, have you done anything on, on that on civics? No, but we, uh, we are in the process. This is going to be fun, Mark. We're in the process of putting together a poll that will look at all the Republican conspiracy theories. So Hunter Biden's laptop being one of those and just see uh, gas stoves and critical race theory. And uh, um, there's a whole, there, you know, we, we're, we're compiling the stuff that they want to talk about and we're going to see if any of it has any salience with the American public. And I mean, we don't prejudge what, you know, public opinion, but I suspect that, <laughs> that none of that stuff has really any, 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 and there's been polling, like the one you just cited. People don't want to hear about Hunter Biden's dick pictures. And, you know, you may think, people may think, oh, that's, that's Marcos being partisan, like dismissing a real issue. That is literally what it's about. It's about Hunter Biden's dick pictures. It's about the Biden campaign asking Twitter, this was at the Twitter files that Elon Musk was all excited about, basically saying, People are posting Hunter Biden's dick pictures online. Can we please get those removed? That was it. Yeah. And, 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 and Twitter saying like, yeah, we don't, people don't really want to see Hunter Biden's penis. <laughs> but Republicans really do. They're obsessed. You had know, something about being obsessive, the, the term they use for the stoves. And that's kind of the history, the, the, the fascination with Bill Clinton's sex life and everybody's sex lives. I mean, that's his own pathology. We, I mean, it looks me honest. We just celebrated Dr. King. I mean, there was, you know, the, the government and conservatives back then fascinated, obsessed with Dr. King's alleged sex life. People still writing books about it. So that's, that's its own kind of illness. And I think part of it too is, I mean, you know how Republicans will say Hillary Clinton's emails and you ask them, okay, well, what was it? What was so bad about Hillary Clinton's emails? And they can't tell you. They literally cannot tell you other than well, she, the server. Yeah, what about the server? They can't tell you because there was nothing. There's nothing in there. There's three classified uh, uh, emails. Two of them were classified after she turned over the server. They hadn't been classified and one was mistaken. It was all about Huma, you know, picking up the kids after school kind of kind of stuff. And there's yeah. a I think this is a lot of it. Hunter Biden's laptop. And then people will say, yeah, well, he, he probably had like shady dealing with, with Joe Biden in China. Right? I mean, there, there's nothing in there except Hunter Biden's dick pictures. And so it's creating that same, but her emails, but Hunter Biden's laptop. There's nothing there. It's just, it's just, it's a fake issue. And they're trying to, to create a whole aura of, of wrongdoing where none really exists. And you know what, Mark? If there's something in that, in that laptop that was illegal, then prosecute them. Nobody cares. Democrats aren't protecting that. We're not, we're not Republicans. We're not, we're not going to, you know, like the way they're, they're doing around Santa, the, the way they, they rally around their liars and their crooks and criminals and, uh, and try to turn everything into a partisan battle. Like, you know what? We don't, if you're a crook, I, I'm, I don't want you in my party. And nobody's claimed that Hunter Biden was any kind of saint. And we all know that the Biden kids, several of them have had, issues with with mental illness and drug abuse and whatnot and it's it's this is a reality that a lot of families face this isn't some kind of indictment on joe biden any more so than than all these american families that have children or family members that are that are addicted to opioids all across red america none, none of that is is necessarily an indictment on the family they want to try to create that. I mean, I, I guess they can, but it's 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 not real. It's fake. And, and when has that ever worked? You you remember you remember Billy Carter? Yeah, you're nothing. Yeah, and yeah. and 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 you know they put that on. You know they they followed Billy Carter around and 
it really kind of reminds me of that. And, and ultimately, it kind of ended up in, invoking some sympathy <laughs> for Billy Carter. He was just a troubled dude. And I mean, he yeah. went, we drank a lot of beer. That's what he did. Like, like, like <laughs> these, in fact, I mean, these guys are kind of like Billy Carter. He's come full of thirst. He just drank right. beer all the time. Beer, big beer drinking Billy Carter. So I don't, I don't think it goes with it. But, but you brought up, though, so how concerned should we be about the classified documents that have been found in Joe Biden's residence? Does that take away his moral authority or ours for that matter when it comes to Trump and his? I mean, obviously, the obvious difference are they self-reported, I believe. Once they, they self-reported. They turned it over immediately. They're not fighting a special prosecutor. I mean, we, you know, Trump fought it for months at the courts. Like, you know, Trump still claims it's all his stuff. It's his materials and, and he's entitled to it. He claims that he can self declassify. Joe Biden's not going around making stupid arguments that he's just because he thought that it, they were not classified, they are automatically not classified. I mean, it, it's the differences are vast, but it really comes down to, you know what? He, somebody screwed up and get down to the bottom of it. So it won't happen no more. Like, I don't think it eliminates, it eliminates his moral authority. What it does is it shows how you react in a situation like that. There's, there's a grown up in a, in a uh, responsible human being in public servant, how he handles that situation compared to an irresponsible, clearly not a public servant in Trump and how he reacted to, to it all. But if Republicans want to make a big deal about how terrible it was that, that, Joe Biden had classified documents in his possession, then how are you still defending Donald Trump? We're not, Mark, I didn't hear you defending Joe Biden. I'm not defending Joe Biden. It's, it's fine. And I'm no problem with, with Merrick Garland having a special prosecutor look into it, just like he did with uh, Donald Trump. Great. Good. Look into it. You said, We're not, you said in the beginning that part of this was Trump just trying to have something to brag about. And, you know, he admitted that on, in the true social rant. He said it was cool. I wanted to take him home. It was cool. It was really cool yeah. to have these documents. I mean, you, you literally <laughs> called it. I'd give you. I'm gonna give Mark. <laughs> he said, you know, just a fool. He said this is so cool. It's a cool keepsake. And you, Robert, he's flashing them to people. Look at it. Look what I got. Yeah. Quote: Cool keepsake. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Cool, he'd say. But at least like twelve, right? It's like he caught the fly ball at a baseball game. That's what he acts like. He was he was freaking president. Yeah, he doesn't need to flash anything for people to be impressed. Trump called the folders a cool keepsake. Quote: This is from True Social, y'all. Remember, these were just ordinary, inexpensive folders. Okay, let's just pay. Are they expensive folders? Okay, never. I'm sorry. <laughs> Remember, these are just ordinary, inexpensive folders with various words printed on them. But they oh, were a cool parts. keepsake. Uh, perhaps the, the Gestapo took some of these empty folders when they raided Mar-a-Lago and counted them as a document, which they are not. It's also possible that Trump-hating Marxist thugs in charge will plant documents while they... So he's not saying they plant it. But he admitted it was a cool keepsake. You can't do that. It's not your stuff. Yep. Now, 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 wait, 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 wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on, let's just, just for a minute. I just thought about something, Marcos. You and I, the president, vice president. So we're going to find a cool keepsake. Uh, ain't there a whole lot of stuff you get when you're in that office that's a lot cooler than some inexpensive folders? You know, <laughs> like, wait, 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 wait. Steph Curry gave Joe Biden a jersey at the ceremony. Technically, he ain't supposed to keep that, right? I'm taking that home. Y'all going to find. You don't pay more jerseys on me? Investigation. They raided Marcos and Marx's house. They brought home jerseys and autographed baseball. That's what you're gonna bust us for. You know? <laughs> people winning nice. Yeah, that is cool. That's a cool kitchen. You know, not a folder. No, you brought them folders home because you selling them. And like like we talked about before. We you and I there's nobody you and I could call to say, hey, we got some classified documents. Can you help us move these? You don't know anybody you can call and ask that. I don't, we don't know. And we don't know anybody who knows who to call. Uh, so only people who do that are sh straight up people involved in espionage who would know what to do with some classified <laughs> documents. So, 
<laughs> so Kid Rock actually said that that Donald Trump had been flashing classified information about North Korea, and he's he was like, "Should I be looking at this stuff?" <laughs> no, you should not be looking at that stuff. <laughs> right, right, right. You're so okay. close to getting it. You're so close to getting it. But right, right. You're right. Trump thought he was a big shot, you know, commander in chief. Like, it's so he's a child. It's amazing the need to validate his existence to people. Right. Uh, and being president's impressive enough. Right. I don't why cool folders with words with why I like that part. Just words. Inexpensive. Is, inexpensive cool folders. What like we said again ad nauseum. He's still the kid they dropped off at the military academy. His parents are in the grave, but he still needs some domination. And I'm telling you, if your parents don't give it to you, you never get it. And it's abusive to expect the rest of us to give it to you. We can never give it to you. The public, yeah. the voters, true social. Yeah. Nobody can ever give it to you because you're messed up and it's just totally, total pathology. Now, I wonder though, they want to do Hunter Biden. They want to make a big deal about Joe Biden and the classified documents. But man, this George Santos stuff, you cannot make that up. It, it's almost, see, if, if I was McCarthy, I'd even be conspiratorial about that. I would accuse the Democrats of planning George Santos in my party <laughs> to hurt me. Cause that dude is so bad. He, and, and it just, every day there's something else. And it's worse somehow. Yeah. yeah. Well, now we know that he was a drag queen in Brazil, so I wonder if that's finally going to be the final straw for Repu for the Republican Party. Yeah, yeah. There's pictures of him as a drag queen, and and obviously you and me don't care, but the Republicans seem to think that all drag queens are groomers or whatever their you know their homophobic, transphobic latest talking points are. So it's uh, I mean, obviously McCarthy's he and his wife he has a four point. Four point uh, edge in the in the in the house. He can't you know vote. He can't afford to lose another one. It just empowers the the reactionaries even more. The Long Island district that's competitive. So given the situation, Democrats would probably have at least an even chance of of picking up that seat. So there's a lot of practical reasons to stick with him. That said. It is branding the Republican Party. I mean, he is an absolute disaster. The local Long Island Republican establishment has repudiated him. Bunch of the Republican congressmen from New York have repudiated him. He is an incredible liability. It allows us to really brand. This is a party that protects liars, cheats. Um, I mean, I don't think we know he's a U.S. citizen. I don't think that's a that's not a that's not a real guarantee at this point. And I don't mean that to be conspiratorial. I mean, we, everything about him has been a lie. Have you really confirmed that he's a U.S. citizen? Because he's lied about everything else. And, and he's Santos, his name. Yeah. And so I'm, I'm I no idea why they're sticking with him at this point. Sometimes you just cut your losses. Right. I mean, McCarthy, no, I guess he I mean. Now I think about it, it's not even about passing legislation because the House ain't going to do crap. It's about McCarthy being outvoted, being booted as Speaker of the House if he loses another, if he loses a vote. Yep. It's that close. He didn't have a lot of room when he finally won on that 15th vote. And maybe he thinks one, he loses one of his allies and that's it. He's gone. We have at least two other Republicans that are facing legal issues in, in, uh, potentially competitive districts. So I think um, McCarthy sort of wants to hold on to what he has, but I can't believe he's giving them, he's giving Santos committee assignments. I mean, it's, it's, it's pathetic is what it is. And it's a gift to us Democrats who are trying to paint Republicans as a party of grifters and liars and cheats. Because they are literally the party of grifters, liars, and cheats. We don't have to make it up. We can point to Santos. We can put them at Gates. We can point to Donald Trump. I mean, uh, you can point to Rick Scott. I mean, they're all liars, grifters, and cheats. And so um, it didn't work for them last year. And it's, and it's again, we're going to be able to run the same playbook next year, but with presidential year turnout, which will lean in our direction in the way that it did last year. Yeah, yeah.
I, I, I think you're right. And even, I'm sure Trump even is worried about Santos. You know, he's probably said, look, I'm the roost in this hen house. This dude is going to overshadow my lies. I mean, he just, the lies on top of lies, he just add to it. Uh, before we go, you, you have been, um, you know, really uh, um, prolific and, and vigilant when it comes to your coverage of Ukraine. Uh, not as much about, I remember when Ukraine was in the daily news every day, not as much. Give us a synopsis of of where things stand today. So just to Daily Coast, we we cover the war every day. So it's between me and and Mark Sumner, my colleague Mark Sumner. Um, we consider it to be critical coverage because it's 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 about democracy and and Ukraine has really shifted the global dynamics in a, in a way that is for the better. I mean, if you remember two years ago, we we were seeing. France under threat of being re- overtaken by Le Pen in the far right. You know, Italy, you have a fascist government has taken over in Italy. You saw the rise of the far right in a lot of European countries. You had Bolsonaro in Brazil. So you had this sort of feeling like, oh my, like there is fascism is on the rise. Uh, anti-immigrant, xenophobic, um, totalitarian regimes in the making. And, and it was scary. And, and Ukraine has brought Europe together in a way that that it was fragmented and disjointed and had no real purpose. And there is sort of this renewed appreciation for, for democracy. To see a country like Ukraine bleed so much for those democratic ideals against, you know, totalitarian Russians. So it, it, is, it is an important discussion. And I actually think even the, the war in Ukraine has sort of reshaped the debate in the United States as well. I don't think anybody voted specifically on the war in Ukraine, but to see Republicans like Taylor Greene and, and Matt Gates simp for Vladimir Putin, I think brings home that connection that this is not a Republican party that believes in democracy and self-determination, but they are, they are authoritarian and totalitarian to their very core. Uh, And that's one of the fault lines in the modern Republican Party, right? Because you have somebody like Mitch McConnell, who's clearly more of an old school anti-Russia Cold War warrior. But there is this new generation, this this MAGA populist right that that really sees more in common with the with Russia, which loves to be white supremacist, that loves to be anti-gay, anti-trans, anti-freedom and really, really uh, have this sort of Christian fascist outlook that uh, that we that we used to say was so terrible when it was the Taliban and it was it was Islamic fundamentalism. Now we're seeing this sort of Christian fundamentalism that Putin is doing. I don't think he believes it, but he's wrapping himself around the cross in order to justify his his war crimes. So the war right now is is um, is um, I don't want to say stalemate. I don't want to say quiet because thousands of people are dying daily. But the lines are pretty frozen right now in that both sides have really dug in and it's hard to move forward. There is a very important donor conference in Ramstein, Germany on Friday, where every indication is, is that the Allies are finally opening up the spigot with uh, just massive armor, artillery, air defenses. And the idea is to finally give Ukraine not just the tools to defend itself, which it has, but the tools to retake more of its territory. So we saw the last three months, so we saw last fall, we saw um, Ukraine retake big, you know, over, over 20,000 kilometers, square kilometers of territory from Russia up in Kurs- down in Kherson, up in Kharkiv. These were just massive swaths of territory that, that, that uh, Ukraine liberated. What's left now is a much smaller front. So you have Russia really concentrated in a smaller number of places and it's really dug in. So this, this, this world where you're going to have these massive shifts in territory are probably done. Now it's a slug fest and, and uh, Ukraine needs the tools to advance under those conditions. It didn't have those or it still doesn't have those. I think that's going to change now that the West is serious about giving Ukraine the tools to win as opposed to just survive good to know good to know all right folks we're underway brand new thursday coast for 2023 looking forward to a great year together 
with Marcos and with all of you. Stay tuned. We'll continue to have these conversations and continue to organize, 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 and mobilize, 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 mobilize. Dailycoast.com, the podcast, the brief, civicswithaq.com. Looking forward to those polls, too, about some of the Republicans. Oh, so am I. <laughs> Next month, too. So it'll be about a, yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Marcos. Thanks for getting woke and listening to Make It Plain. As always, perform an act of kindness on behalf of an elder or young person. Write a letter to a sister or brother who just so happens to find her or himself incarcerated. Offer libations to the ancestors upon whose sturdy shoulders we all now stand. And above all, give thanks to the God of your understanding by whatever name you call her and him. All God asks of us is that we give each other love. Thanks for giving MIP love. And please remember to subscribe and give us a five-star rating. If all hearts and minds are clear, it has been made plain.